So thank you very much for having me here. I am Rafael Serrano. I'm a PhD candidate at the University of Alicante here in Spain. And I'm the job market and I'm going to be presenting to you my job market paper on structural transformation in India and the role of the service sector. So we know that the literature has identified that differences across sectors in productivity growth have been, uh, has been one of the major drivers of structural transformation, right? And the standard experience we observe from industrialized countries is that agricultural productivity uh, growth is typically the fastest one, while uh, which allows uh, workers in the agriculture sector to move into uh, all the sectors of the economy. Then we typically think of the manufacturing sector as one of the most technologically dynamic ones. And in particular, because it is uh, sort of uh, more prone to automation and things like this. However, when we look at the Indian experience, uh, services are growing the fastest, then it is agriculture and then it is manufacturing. And this is like a long-term trend we observe as Broadbury and Gupta documented uh, even before the colonization from the British. So the, my job market paper tries to address the question of why this, uh, this trend occur and quantifies uh, what are the main variables affecting this. And so this, in this graph, I show you uh, uh, the log of labor productivity normalized at the beginning of the period. But if you see what I do first is I uh, look into what happens within the manufacturing and the service sector. And I classify industries within two these two sectors into high productivity growth versus low productivity growth, as in the paper by Dunecker and Quothus, uh, only that I also divide the manufacturing sector. What we observe is that the high productivity services grow at the same rate as the high productivity manufacturing sector, but at the end of the 90s, uh, the high productivity services just take off. And if we look at the least productive industries in the manufacturing sector, we observe that they are not only stagnant, but that they are they have a decline in labor productivity growth. So what I do is I take a, a, an accounting type of model in the spirit of Boer and Gothos and Herendorf and Fang, which is a, it's a sequence of static economies. And in this model, I have five sectors of production, which is uh, agriculture, manufacturing, and services. But manufacturing and services are subdivided into high productivity and low productivity subsectors. Uh, in each of these sectors, uh, can potentially employ both high skill and low skill labor. And what I do is I introduce a series, exogenous series calibrated, which are uh, the sectoral TFPs, the sectoral skills bi skill bias technical change, the aggregate supply of high skilled workers, and the se uh, a set of sectoral distortions. Uh, the model allows me to identify uh, or to quantify the impact of this exogenous series in the process of structural transformation and to address which are the most relevant ones. So from the calibration exercise, I hope you can see it well. Uh, the, uh, these are the series, the calibrated series uh, for total factor productivities. Um, these two series, which are for the high productivity manufacturing and services show that the growth rate is uh, very similar. So it is not TFP what makes uh, labor productivity different uh, across these two sectors. Rather, if we look here, this uh, is the high skill relative weight, which is a parameter that captures the in levels, the relative demand for high skilled workers. And the increase in this parameter shows the increase in this relative demand. What we observe is that the high productivity services are actually the more intensive in, in, in high skilled workers, while the high productivity manufacturing, even if it is growing, in levels it is way below, even below than the low productivity sectors. Uh, this here in this panel, we have the sectoral distortions, uh, which are uh, relative to agriculture, and we observe that for the high productivity services and the high productivity manufacturing sector, these are the largest. These distortions are actually preventing structural transformation to happen as fast as they could. And here I just show the relative supply of high skilled workers, which is increasing uh, over time uh, continuously. So to conclude very quickly, uh, TFPs are the main driver of growth, but they cannot explain the differences across the high productivity sectors uh, what can explain this difference is the high, uh, the skill bias technical change and the supply of uh, skilled workers. In an experiment, if we hold the supply of skilled workers constant at uh, 1981 values, by 2017, GDP per capita will be reduced by half, which is uh, a big contribution. This is not only an endowment effect, this is also part of the how this uh, supply is split over time. Also, uh, removing the distortions has a heterogeneous effect on depending on which sector uh, we do so, these are two 
extreme counterfactuals examples I have in the paper, removing the barriers in the high productivity manufacturing will increase GDP by 1.5, uh, by a factor of 1.5, while in the high productivity services, it would be by 2.6. This is because it accelerates the process of structural transformation. So basically the services led growth, it will be crucially affected by the supply of skilled workers. And without a continuous expansion of this supply, premature deindustrialization might be blocking the road towards economic convergence. So uh, if you have any questions, I, I would be very happy to address them. If you have questions, you'll have to speak up because I don't think he'll be, he can see the hand raising. Oh uh, yeah, no, I cannot. I was curious about these numbers you have on the last page uh, there. How much of that is just because yes. the manufacturing sector is so much smaller than the um, service sector? Uh, well, uh, I mean, this uh, the, the composition effect, uh, you mean, uh, well, the manufacturing sector, in, in fact, in terms of uh, employment share is larger. The, the high productivity manufacturing sector is larger in terms of employment share than the high productivity services in, in, in India. So the thing is that when you remove, when we remove the distortions here in the high productivity services, you allow for a much more uh, larger flow of uh, high skilled individuals to enter. And therefore your increase in productivity is not offset by the increase in the, in the workers, right? So, I mean, I don't think it is that much of, the, of that uh, opposition effect, but uh, yeah, it, is, it, sh it should be important as well. Another question I had is uh, high productivity versus low productivity. Mm -hmm. um, how correlated that is that with high skill intensive versus low skill intensive? So it, it is. Way, high it productivity is, means high productivity growth, right? Yes, yes. I, I focus on high productivity growth. So uh, an industry, is, uh, I classify it as a high productivity industry if the average growth rate of the pro, of the industry is larger than the sector it belongs to. And in fact, it is uh, correlated, but for example, with the level of education, but for example, uh, education, uh, the education sector, for example, or the, or, or the trade sector is also skill intensive, but it is not as productive as the other industries. The main industries in the high productivity services are uh, post and telecommunications, uh, financial services and business services. Uh, um, oh. I, I, oh, sorry, Michael, go ahead. Please go ahead, Andreas. Um, I was wondering, you showed us TFP measures, and I just wanted to ask whether you have capital in the model. So is yes. this TFP with or without capital? And if you have capital, is there some indication that somehow, um, you know, capital deepening plays a role? Or do you take here a, like a, a perspective where capital is at a steady state level? Or how do you think about these issues? So the model is, is completely static. There is no capital in the model. Uh, what I show here, the measures of the, this uh, TFP is this is a, a Higgs neutral technical process that is calibrated in the model, right? And the figure that I was showing here is this is a log of real labor productivity taken from the, uh, from the CLEM series for, for India. Now, uh, the, uh, what you're asking, the, what is the role of, the, of capital here? So uh, capital would be affecting the results mostly through terms of capital skill complementarities, right? And uh, the capital intensity is larger in the high productivity manufacturing than in the high productivity services, although there are not such big difference, but it's still uh, more intense in, in capital, the high productivity uh, manufacturing sector. So uh, the, the measures of the, high, uh, let's say capital skill complementarities and uh, this uh, strength of capital per se in moving the circular transformation would be uh, captured by the uh, by this parameter here that which would would be capturing sort of a skill bias technical change but it, it would also be capturing a reduced from setting the the capital skill complementarities effect so if the capital skill complementarities effect are stronger in the high productivity manufacturing the high productivity manufacturing is more intensive in in capital uh, i would be uh, kind of underestimating the the effect here right a I don't know question. Is... Look, a question. Uh, Please. One is on the matter of skills. Do you disaggregate or decompose the kind of skill requirements? I mean, one specific matter is, for instance, in in, China, in India and South Asia, the mm -hmm. emphasis on technical 
uh, TBET training has been far less than say in East Asia and China. So do you mm -hmm. decompose the skill requirements one? And, and second is when the emphasis is on high skills uh, based uh, service sector growth, what happens to income distribution in the absence of low skill based manufacturing? Um, yeah, okay. So first of all, uh, I take the numbers for the high skill workers on the, and by the skill intensity by industry and so on from census data from IPONS International, right? And one of the characteristics of India is that the distribution of educational attainment is quite skewed with the vast majority of individuals having primary or less than primary education, but there is a rather substantial, uh, substantial pool of high skilled workers. What I consider a high skilled worker is a worker which has at least some university education. And even if India was like roughly half of the GDP of China for quite a long time, this pool of individuals is more intensive in the across the industries when we when we compare these numbers. Okay. And the second question about income inequality, let's say, I cannot say very much about that because, uh, yeah, so in my model, uh, basically, I can show it quickly. So in the model, there is a, an exogenous fraction of high skilled individuals and an exogenous fraction of low skilled individuals that earn a different wage. And, but I can estimate, and, and in fact, it's what I do, uh, the skill premium, which is, uh, let me show you. So the skill premium would be here. The skill premium in India that I estimate is uh, quite large, but it's not, uh, it's not much that I can say about what is the impact that this structural transformation process has on inequality per se as, uh, as an income distribution problem in, in India, right? Uh, still, the, the pool of high-skilled workers is still low for, the, for India, but uh, we have to consider uh, the stage of development that India is at. Uh, could I ask you uh, one question about the about the measurement? Um, Please. So a, a big chunk of service employment, I guess, in India is in um, you know retail and you know little repair shops and so on. I was mm -hmm. just wondering conceptually, how how do we think about measuring the productivity in these sectors? I mean, usually you would think that a big chunk maybe of this productivity growth is in exactly these unmeasured parts about a variety of gains, changes in quality, and so on. And mm -hmm. so I was just wondering whether you had any any thoughts on that. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's a very fair point uh, about, uh, let me see if I, no, I don't think I have it here. So uh, about measurement, uh, I, I strictly focus on labor productivity, and I take this from the CLEMS database. Uh, the Reserve Bank of India uh, tries to make an effort to also include the underground sector uh, in these accounts, uh, but it is, it is difficult to uh, to say a little bit more about quality of grading or something like this, if this is what you have in mind. Another, uh, in the paper, I also show, I don't have it here, but in the paper, I also show that this pattern that we observe for the differences in, in trend growth uh, across these sectors also happens if you look at relative prices instead of labor productivity, which is also uh, a measure that might be reflecting more this productivity per se. Um, Apart from that, I cannot say much, much more about it. So, uh, so I, I've seen in the in the chat about what types of distortions I measure, and if I estimate the impact of our agricultural sector. So uh, I don't focus much on the uh, agricultural sector, but about the. Mm, so the distortions are basically a wedge introduced here. So what I have to do, what I can do, is I look for an exogenous response for this, and I consider. Uh, one possibility is that that of female employment. Raphael, uh, yeah. A, yeah, there you go. Move that. There's, there's a, it, it's kind of in the way of. It's just a black window. Uh, in front. Yeah. Okay. Uh, right. Can you see right. it? Uh, if, yes. Thank oh. you. Oh. Okay. Uh, so yeah. So basically, women work in the least productive sectors of the economy. And in the paper, I also have uh, some evidence. Provide some evidence that these employment shares, uh, the high productivity services, need a complementarity between being close to a large city and having high schooling, while for the, for the high productivity manufacturing, these complementarities between schooling and distance to a city are not present. 